Hi, I'm STS-131 astronaut Rick Mastracchio. You're watching NASA TV. Discovery and a special good morning to you, Rick. Good morning, Houston. Thanks for that song, and uh, thanks to my wife Candy and Michael and David and Lisa and Ann. Uh, we got a lot of work accomplished up here, and we still got a little more, and we're looking forward to coming home soon. Houston Discovery on the big loop for Robo. Go ahead, Discovery for Robo. Good morning. Steph and uh, Nelko are up and at them pretty early, and uh, we're wondering uh, if you're ready, uh, we can uh, begin with the uh, MPLM operations. And Discovery Houston, uh, we have DSATs inhibited. We are ready. Roblox Force Station Discovery, uh, all the pros are ready. Station Teams here on the ground reporting that the space station's robotic arm is now in motion, getting ready to pack the Leonardo multipurpose logistics module into the shuttle's cargo bay for return to Earth. Arms being controlled from the station's Destiny Laboratory robotic workstation by mission specialist Stephanie Wilson and Naoko Yamazaki. Getting a Leonardo berth, then um, letting go of it with the station arm and manu maneuvering the station arm to a position that won't get in the way of the docked late inspection will take about an hour of robotics time and all. And then uh, Wilson will move straight over to the, the shuttle's robotic workstation where she'll be working with pilot Jim Dutton and Mission Specialist Stottie Metcalf Lindenberger to begin the uh, inspection of the shuttle's starboard wing with the shuttle robotic arm. And now, Co and Steph, uh, the payload is in the bay fully latched. Good job, ladies. Dottie, Dottie, and uh, will you proceed for undrafting? Thanks, Dottie. Stand by, we're deactivating the kill cam. Okay, Dottie, for the kill cam, are standing by. Lindenberger there reporting that uh, Leonardo is now safely inside the shuttle's cargo bay. The next step will be for the robotics operators in uh, Destiny's laboratory to let go of the module so that it can move away and make way for the next set of robotic operations scheduled for the day, the late inspection of the shuttle's heat shield. Steph, you've got to go for MPLM ungrapple. Station copies, we have a go for ungrapple. Split screen view here from cameras on board the International hey, Space Station of the Thank Robotics you. Work. Crew preparing to uh, release the Leonardo Multipurpose Logistics Module, which you can see the shuttle station robotic arm has in uh, both of these views, and then move the arm out of the way for the next uh, robotic operation, the inspection of Discovery's heat shield.
Space Station robotic arm slowly moving away from the Leonardo Thank module. Robotics officers here on the ground report that the uh, space station robotic arm has reached its back off point for the uh, work that it's been doing to get the Leonardo module installed inside the shuttle's cargo bay. That means that portion of its work for the day is done. It just now has to maneuver into a position that gets it well out of the way of the uh, state the shuttle's robotic arm, as that arm will be performing the late inspection of the shuttle's heat shield today. So the Leonardo module now back in full possession of the space shuttle for the first time since flight day four when it was installed on the space station. Discovery recording is on. Discovery used to copies. Space Shuttle Discovery here, orbiting along with the International Space Station, getting a view we don't normally get to see of the uh, inspection of the shuttle's heat shield. It's being performed before the shuttle undocks due to the fact that uh, the shuttle's own KU band antenna is uh, not working this mission, so they're taking advantage of the station's KU band antenna, which allows them to send large packets of information down to the ground and uh, also video and that's necessary to get the information from the heat, sh heat shield inspection down to the experts on the ground to then study it for any sign that uh, Discovery's heat shield might have been damaged while it's been in orbit. Crew is working on the uh, inspection of the starboard wing at the moment, and uh, Commander Alan Poindexter has been working simultaneously to get the uh, video and data files of the inspection as they perform it and uh, transfer that, or convert that rather, into files that can be transferred to the station via um, hard, a portable hard drive for downlink to the teams here on the ground. view there of the orbiter boom sensor system moving uh, through the field of view on the end of the space shuttle robotic arm. That's a 50-foot long 
extension to the robotic arm that gives it a 50 foot closer view of the heat shield that it's surveying. Also a suite of uh, sensors on the end for use in, in that survey. Those sensors include a laser dynamic range imager which com combines an infrared laser illuminator with an infrared camera receiver to provide 3D video views of the heat shield. Although in this case, uh, the team here on the ground to expedite the downlinking to the ground through the space station's KU band antenna, they're actually uh, performing that part of the inspection in 2D, or just two-dimensional video. That uh, was the case also for the flight day two inspection of the shuttle's heat shield. And team here on the ground uh, reported early in the mission that they actually had not needed the 3D video views of the heat shield for the past few missions, so they thought they could get along without them this time as well, and that turned out to be the case, so uh, is the method being used again today. Other sensors on the end of the orbiter boom sensor system include a, an intensified television camera, which provides the same standard video views that the other cameras on the robotic arm provide, but 50 feet closer. And then there's also the laser camera system, which can generate 3D models of the heat shield that are accurate to within a few millimeters at distances of up to 10 feet. Discovery on two at the bottom of page 45. Recording is off. Discovery Houston copies. Discovery Houston air to ground two for DEX. Go ahead, Danny. Yeah, DEX, I uh, want to just let you, you and the crew know that you guys are doing an outstanding job uh, working this inspection. And uh, I uh, want to give you some good news. You got, we show you guys presently about the two hours ahead of the schedule, and um, we know that uh, you're complete with the nose cap survey and on your way over to the port side. So uh, we're going to let it uh, be your call as to whether or not you guys want to uh, take a break at this time or if you want to go ahead and press ahead with the uh, port survey. Thanks for the offer. We'd like to get uh, get through this and get the data down to the ground as quickly as we can. So we're all taking breaks uh, periodically, and uh, we're in good shape. So we'll continue with the port survey. Okay, very good. We'll meet you over on uh, page 48 when you guys get there. Thanks a lot, Danny. And Houston Discovery for page 51 in the survey. How do you like the view? Discovery Houston, we like the view. You're go to press. Roger. Houston Discovery for the bottom of 51. Recording is on. Houston copies. Discovery crew now beginning the port wing section of their survey of the shuttle's heat shield. This section uh, being performed by mission specialist Naoko Yamazaki and pilot Jim Dutton, as well as Commander Alan Poindexter. Houston uh, for the team 
just wanted to let you guys know that uh, you're presently about uh, three plus hours ahead of schedule. We know that you have a meal coming up, but uh, on behalf of the the ground control team here in Houston, we want to let you know that we certainly sincerely appreciate uh, all the hard work that you've given us uh, here today. And you've done an outstanding job. And uh, when uh, Dex has an opportunity, if he could check his outlook, uh, we'd appreciate it. that long and uh, please also uh, thank the team they just did an incredible job by uh, getting us the procedure early and for all the people who uh, pv'd it worked through it and uh, helped us to get ready with the conference yesterday it really paid off so our uh, thanks to them we copy all And there you see Discovery coming into view, the uh, cargo carrier sitting down into its payload bay. As the camera spins around, you can see the Quest airlock and uh, entering into the uh, Russian segment of the station. That is the Soyuz TMA-17 there on the left. That is the uh, Progress 35 there docked with the Pierce docking compartment. That's a Progress 35 that is just exiting to the right of the screen. Uh, we'll be undocked here shortly. Additionally, the uh, Soyuz TMA-17 will be relocated uh, as well in the coming weeks. It'll move over to um, Zvezda after the Progress 36, which is currently attached there, uh, will be deorbited as well. Once the Soyuz TMA-17 moves off of the Zarya module, that will make way for MRM-1 which is a new Russian segment that's coming up on the very next shuttle mission, STS-132, which is currently scheduled for May. You can also see the big ammonia tank uh, sitting at the very back of Discovery's payload bay. It's an ammonia tank, even though it is uh, considered old and spent, still has about 1,200 pounds of liquid inside of it.